Frank with Motor and TV, and uh, we're here in the round table. Except it's not kind of round, it's more yeah. like a C. But uh, well, anyhow, today we're talking about uh, SEMA and whether some of the vehicles there are roadworthy or not. Uh, let me uh, just real quick introduce everybody here. Go ahead. I'm Gabe Sanchez of uh, Watch GR Go. I am Watch GR Go. Uh, we build cars, flip cheap cars, and uh, went to SEMA this year. Did everybody here go to SEMA this year? That's probably a good question, huh? Not everyone. Not everyone, yeah. yeah. I'm Tim Bonnell. I'm a local collector and enthusiast. My name's Dan Hagenbuck. I'm a retired school teacher, taught automotive at South Hall. Doug Kennedy, uh, Rodney and I have shift, and uh, I have a collection of, uh, a small collection of cars as well. All right. All right, first question. <laughs> he can't. <laughs> We got a school teacher. <laughs> Here, yeah. 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 All right, look at this. this Thanks for terrible. hosting. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm to print it so you can read so, it. So. <laughs> so, the cars here are represented by the manufacturers and the builders. Uh, should the manufacturer check the builds before allowing them into their booths? And the other one says, uh, should the cars be inspected for being road worthy? Right. Let's talk about that. So, basically, this year, from what I've seen, I didn't get to go this year. I went last year. I didn't really notice it as a problem, but this year, apparently there was a lot of really bad builds and uh, really bad welds, uh, people just using tons of washers instead of actually using the correct fittings, stuff like that. So basically, should SEMA, you know, being that it's their brand, and a lot of people on the internet are just talking tons of smack about the builds this year. Should SEMA try to uh, basically bolster their brand or should it be on the booths, the manufacturers that have these cars? Man, that's tough. But there wasn't, I mean, I wasn't too impressed. Yeah. I'm with, I mean, I was there and I wasn't too impressed with some of the builds, but I, you know, I'm an OCD and an anal guy, you know, yeah. so it takes a lot to uh, impress me. But uh, uh, I just, I was disappointed yeah. with some of the builds that I've seen. And especially being SEMA. I mean, being right. SEMA, you think there'd be, I don't know, I guess I thought the, the quality was not there that I was hoping to see on some. Well, I think, uh, you know, I know one thing, the truck industry is huge. So obviously they're trying to get as many possible trucks and any configuration as many as possible. Uh, so yeah, there's gonna be some stuff that uh, you maybe pushed in, maybe uh, <laughs> if it was lucky it rolled in and, uh, but for not having axles and stuff like that, you know, is, is that the end of the world? You know, are they there, you know, to actually show how well they work, or are they there just to be looked at? Well, aren't these vehicles a reflection of the, the, the booth that they're in and, and that business? And if they're not put together well, I think that poorly reflects upon the vendor. Well, I, I, I agree with you, but um, I'm going to give you an example. You know, how many vehicles do you look at uh, daily? And you don't know, you know, what internally they may have in them or not have them. Okay, I'll, I'll take you up on that question. <laughs> so, SEMA is supposed to be the best. Absolutely. That is the one car show that you can go to anybody, whether they're car aficionados or not, and say, have you heard of SEMA? Oh yeah, I've heard of SEMA. Yeah. You know, and you have amazing products come out of SEMA. That said, any build that's there should be the best build possible. You can't just take something that you'll find on the corner. Um, we have that Scion XP sure. that we did. And when you look at it from the, the outside, you're like, okay, somebody has slammed this vehicle. It's been uh, stanced and everything. 
not my taste, but you know it's there. On right. closer inspection, as we go through, we find that somebody's used stacked washers instead of actual um, brackets and whatnot to stance the wheels. They've allowed the car to uh, come through and just destroy itself. That's not something I want to see at SEMA. I want to see the products that make it possible to stance a car like that, if that's my flavor of things. Yeah, you'll go to a car show and see, you know, however many of the same trucks or the same Mustangs or whatever. Right. I want to see the pride in that build. That's what makes it special. Well, I think, you know, a lot of these guys don't know manufacturers. And, you know, they, they'll go there and they may or may not, you know, get the best of the best stuff whatever it may be and and that's what they end up with and you know you go there and you see it and oh hey that looks really neat and then you really start inspecting it mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've ever how many times you've been to see or not but uh, when you really start inspecting some of the vehicles there you'll start seeing some of the things that maybe shouldn't have been done that were done just to get it there in time for the show sure I mean, I understand cutting corners, but when you make, you know, a cut for a corner, you end up making two more. I, I definitely agree so. with that. I think I'm going to take the other side of that argument, which is, I think, SEMA's official side, right? So SEMA stands for Specialty Equipment Manufacturer Association. Right. And it's just a meeting for vendors, and it's not a car show. It should never be called a car show. And it's not for the public to come look at cars or anything like that. It's for manufacturers and buyers of their products to come look at their products in reality for probably the first time, right? Like any level lift and uh, Kaizen Relay and people that are bringing brand new products to market. It's for buyers of those products to show up and take a look at them, right? And nobody cares how the car is built. Or you're not even there to look at the cars, really, if you're there to do what SEMA was built for. So you're there to buy new products and figure out what your customers are going to buy and where the market's headed, and you don't really care about what's on display. There are, there are amazing things on display, like Speed Course cars and Ring Brothers cars and just stuff that's built to the nines, and then there's other stuff where the vendor threw the parts catalog at a truck, and they don't really care what else happens as long as the parts catalog makes it in the truck, so you can be like, that's our shock, that's our lift kit, you know, XXX, and the rest of this doesn't matter at all. It's just, look at our catalog, what do you want to buy? But that becomes a purpose built thing right there where you're saying this is the display this is that's the, all it is it's right. a display for a catalog and it's not a car show and it's not for the public and it's not even open to the public it's just really easy to get tickets like you just call a friend and offer them the forty dollars the ticket cost and you've got a ticket right so there's a lot of people at SEMA that probably shouldn't be there that's that's what it really comes down to because they think it's a car show and it's not well, I think but, the quality of the cars inside sure inside the building that is actually setting in booths uh-huh uh, that's a problem. Are really right there and where it should be. Well, then the thing is, as you move inside, right, the booth space is, is, some, is a, you move towards like Central Hall, right. where the booth costs you, the, what, quarter million dollars for the week. Up to a million right? dollars. So yeah. that car that McGuire's brought is going to be perfect. But as you go outside and you start going to like the truck, trucking area and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. lots of the cheaper areas where people need to spend less money. The build quality goes down a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's kind of expected. And SEMA has made it fun for the public, which is kind of a bad thing. Like it has this big draw for Oops. everyone Oops. to show you up. You said the key word there, public. Yeah, they, they unfortunately, like there's really cool stuff that goes on and that makes people think it's a car show for everyone to show up to, but it's not. Especially with Hoonigan's crazy, awesome area where they're drifting all day and yeah. Ford's out there jumping yeah. cars and giving people rides. And your ticket, was the price to go jump a Raptor. And how often do you get to jump a Raptor in real life? So that $40, if you are the public, is worth every penny of it, because maybe you got to ride with Kim Block or something crazy. So it's kind of like, it's all over the place, right? But SEMA knows their focus, and their stance is, the public shouldn't be here, and it's not a car show. So I think that's what it really comes down to. Okay, now. I, but I will say one thing, if you watch it on TV, you see these cars and it looks like a car show. It does. It looks no exactly <laughs> like a car show. And then they've got the builders and then you've got the builders of the builders trying to, uh, for the competition of the best, best one there. Well, I, I so, think that the media definitely goes at it like it's a car show. They do. Oh, definitely. Because there, there's no other way to portray it other than unless they go after it's a trade show. And that's really hard to put a trade show on TV. 
it's the only trade show that really has TV coverage, probably. Well, but still, the cars in the booths should be. Um, I mean, I have to. I mean, that's where I have an issue. Yeah. I mean, if you have a booth there and the car in the booth, uh, I mean that that's your product, and man, you want that to. Exactly. It should be the best of the best. Best of the best. The other side. And of if I best. owned a company, I mean, I would not want. Yeah, how would I would you not like want a car. In, I mean, I'd want to if I owned a. I mean. I'd have to look at the builds and, and I would pick what I thought was. I totally agree the with best. that. Yeah. But you know, those vendors never see the cars. All they do is ship out a laundry list of I products know. to a shop and that shop bolts them on, and whatever shows up is what they're stuck with. Well, see, and that's another thing is like, if you are, okay, there's obviously a SEMA, they have a whole hall dedicated to wheels and tires. Sure. And if you're putting wheels and tires on a car, you know, if that's what you're trying to portray is the rims and stuff, well, you really don't need a car for that. No, you just get an Aventador from whoever will let you borrow theirs. Because most of the right. cars are just individuals that they borrowed the cars. Right, right. You just call somebody up with a, a sick car and throw your wheels on it. Done. Right. And that's and that's easy. But now if you have a guy that's uh, a company that's uh, selling cams. Sure. You know, yeah, you can't see the cam in the car, but you want to, you want someone to go by that booth with the cans at yep. and see a badass ride in front of it and be like, that's what I want to do. Right. And But those guys have sick cars. If you go to yeah. Camp's booth, there's yeah. no doubt that they don't have a half million dollar build in there. Right. But they also have the budget to not mess around. But if you, now, just as a person who, say you have a, a small auto shop and you're at SEMA and you, you want to check out some new products and you go there, it's a booth that they're selling, you know, shocks or something. And now you go in there and then the frame on the, the car truck is just bubblegum welds and something that you did when you were 12. You know, that's not a good representation. And so people at that point be like, if they're not, if they're not serious about this bill, exactly. why am I going to be serious about their product? Exactly. Sure. exactly. But also, uh, those vendors don't have much money or R&D budget or didn't care. Because if you go to Icon or uh, King... Greatest stuff in the world, right? But those are the best manufacturers in the world. Right. So first they've got QA on the build probably. They might have flew someone out to look at it and their products are the best in the world. So it's it's just really different. I think it comes down to the vendor's budget and that's kind of where a lot of the, you know, what shows up on Facebook as memes comes from. Yeah. There's companies that don't build great products and didn't really care what showed up as long as they had a booth. So, so what you're saying is if but they, they should only have a budget of yeah. X, yeah, they probably yeah. spent ten grand on their booth, right? They couldn't afford a big booth, and so they're just trying to find some car out there yeah. that they can stick a sticker on and absolutely cover the whole truck with sponsor stickers, build the truck for free, and then sell it on eBay for sixty grand when it's done. Yeah, yeah. But do you think the the uh, the uh, I know SEMA they're not gonna they don't have the time probably to deal with everybody's car that's coming in it's thousands of cars. Sure, but. That would mean for me is that the owner should be on the booth person. Whoever whoever has the booth or the owner of the company, take the time to go find something that's not a piece of crap, something sure. that's not bubblegum welded or or got spacers to the nines. Well, you know, you know yeah. SEMA is sprung on us every year. Who knows when it's going to happen? Right. So, <laughs> just, uh, There's mean, not a lot of prep time for that show. Yeah, no, that, that's that's what it comes down to. Is a lot of these. You'll see these guys on YouTube and stuff that, that are building cars for SEMA, and they're like, "Oh, it's crunch time. I, uh -huh. I gotta I gotta work 48, 72 hours straight." I'm like, you you know it's every year at this time, right? exactly. And if you miss it this year, you you wait. Yeah, have yeah. the due diligence to not send in crap. Yeah, and show a good product. I mean, you know, okay, I don't have enough enough budget as you know with my fiberglass and carbon fiber stuff. Sure, you gotta wait. But yeah, but there's not really a lot of wait. Because the sponsor that was like, uh, who maybe like it was an engine sponsor like Nelson Racing or Proline or something, but you're building a car and you didn't have time to finish the car, but you slap their engine in it and they just want to show their engine. Car's showing up no matter what. Because they spent, they gave you 30 grand. So I kind of like it with up. the paint, paint products. Oh yeah, PBG and stuff. And you see the, you know, fantastic paint yeah. jobs. Yeah, beautiful. Best in the Best in Beautiful, business. you know, because you're there to see the paint jobs exactly. sure. on, on those cars. Well, I know that SEMA for a fact okay every car that comes in i think it's just a checklist though well i think they, they just... okay it. i mean you got to get an okay from sema to bring your car yeah and and there's a lot of times uh in the past where we have brought a car um 
one year I was with uh, Sherman Williams, for instance, and uh, you know we brought a car for uh, RCR, huh? Richard Childress, and uh, you know it was a big deal just to get that car in, even though that you know hundred thousand dollar plus car, mm -hmm. and you know, but with SEMA you have to get an okay by them. Sure, it's not just you know. Okay, I'm going in because I'm with this guy, right? Type of thing. So I think we have to say at some point, SEMA is liable or <laughs> yeah. responsible. Yeah. yeah, they're they're definitely responsible for what shows up what shows at their up. show. I don't know. I mean, you've got the onus that goes to the individual. SEMA is overall provider. Yeah, but then how exactly do you gauge? that quality yeah okay if you've got bubble gum and crap for welds then that's not coming in but for other individual things it's not just a mobile billboard or, or product display sure how yeah. exactly do you judge that they'd have to fly somebody out to every build while it was before it shipped yeah. to the show right yeah. and give it an okay yeah because the only other yeah. the only option would be to to have a list of like Secondary backup cars. Right. This one's crap. Right. Sorry, we're gonna go with this guy. Right. Well, let's say, I mean, if you've been to SEMA and you know this, you get there before it even opens up. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. For us, Friday uh, before probably. They have a you know, two or three day period of just moving. Sure. Prior to ever opening the show, so they could have two or three days of inspection mm -hmm. of the vehicles. And say, okay, this car's this, this car, no, nope, no, that one doesn't get in. Can you imagine the backlash from the vendor that, that just spent rough well, twenty five thousand or or even a quarter million on a big booth, and then their car got kicked out? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah but <laughs> they you know, run it. The money runs you, it. Nothing could, else. <laughs> could you imagine spending a quarter of a million dollars and and having a ten thousand dollar car show up that looks like crap? <laughs> I can. It'd be pretty funny. But and also the guys that are spending that are Ford and Chevy that have half the show. So yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. they'd never bring that. Right. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I, do you I think there saying. should be an inspection? I honestly I think that they wouldn't be able to say no because the money is the only thing that matters at the end of the day. They got to pay for the convention hall for a week. I think he's right on that. That's the way most of those shows are run. The money. Yeah. yeah. It's no. sad because they, you know they should, it should be quality over quantity. It, it'd almost be like when you go to like a printing trade show or any trade show, right? And you've got the big boys, like a printing or a camera trade show where you've got like Canon and Nikon running the big booths. And then all of a sudden there's a bunch of, you know, Chinese knockoff manufacturers, but they still have booths and you told them all no. Just and just think of all the money you'd be throwing out the door that you could have brought in. So that's that's what it would end up being is, is there enough money? All right. So the guys that were there at SEMA this year, uh, what, do you, what are your takes on the uh, that manifold that got stolen? Oh, I think that was the best marketing ploy there. They probably stole it themselves. I didn't say that on the <laughs> internet, yeah. but if they did, that would have been brilliant. They should have. Yeah, because now from what I've understood, it, it what didn't happen during the show. Of course. Even yeah. though yeah. those of us have been there, security is a joke there. There's no security, yeah. No, nah, not really. It's terrible. But the uh, uh, as far as that goes, it was taken after hours. Yep. Now, I do know they... They, at the end of the sh show every night, five or six, whatever, they tell everybody to get out. Mm -hmm. But I know that a lot of booths, we, we took pictures last year, uh, or the year before, and, and we stayed late so that we, all the crowds would disperse so we get better pictures of the cars. Yeah. Um, so they really don't really, I don't know, hammer at home that you need to get out of the building. Right. They'd have to have security walking around checking every single badge. Because if you're an exhibitor, you get to stay anyway. Yeah, yes. I, I think it, that... That yeah. only works with exhibitors being in there. I yeah. know media or anybody else has got to be out. Right. Got to be out. Yeah. yeah, right. They could inspect the cars during that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect time. Yeah. Okay, so so the public, general public, thinks SEMA as a car show. Um, obviously, it's not really set up to just, hey, here's my cool ride. Yeah. It's both, It's mostly for you know, showing off product of, from the vendors. Um, should it be a combination of both? And should it be open to the public? Oh, man. Can you imagine the disaster? There's what? Uh, <laughs> there's 200,000 people there that week? Yeah. If it was open to the public and it turned into 500,000? 
Yeah. I'd never go again. You could, you, could, you could move. You couldn't could see move. anything. Yeah, it, it, it's see rough anything. as it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really bad. So. What percentage of people there do you think are the public anyway? Oh, at least exactly 25, 30. Yeah, yeah. when you yeah. see at seventy least. year old women walking around, you're like, you're not here to put that, a new the can wife can ride. The spouse pass gets you anywhere. You can, yeah, yeah, you can always bring your your girlfriend, wife, whatever. Yeah, so on spouse pass. Yeah, or your niece. Yep, yeah, probably. Yeah. Anyway. That's what I was <laughs> they have a lot of nieces at Barrett Jackson. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure of that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else did I have written down there? What else you have written down? Uh, was car show. Well, you're talking about the builders. Uh, kind of seem to show consider a car show. Right. And I think we, we talked about that. that quite a bit. Uh, should it be and. Uh, should the cars that be inspected for road worthiness? In okay. other words, so so, are they drivable? In other words, should should they be trailer queens or should they be able to drive in on their own power? Because I know some of these trucks had what the internet's dubbed it Bluetooth axles because there's no axles or, or no drive shaft or or whatever, and, and it's just basically a roller. Yeah, you know, well, not it's really under its own power. I will say every one of those trucks that has Bluetooth drive shafts, it's only the front. They're all yeah. just, you know, permanent two-wheel drive trucks. It's because they couldn't get the angle right when they put a, yeah. a you know, a forty inch truck. Yeah, yeah, excellent. I know that most car shows, quote, true car shows, part of the thing that they have to do is they have to be able well, to drive in on, on their own yeah, power. On their own power. Mm-hmm. And I think at least they ought to be able to do that. I totally agree. I don't know. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, a, a you know, if it doesn't. I, I disagree with the fact, I, I say it's a 100% car show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. I, but it defies know. the purpose of the, I mean, you know, I think everything should be drivable. Well, Absolutely. On anything. Yeah. I don't care if it's SEMA or what. But if I, you do the SEMA and you're watching it on TV, you're seeing it the builders. So the cars are drove up there, yes, and sir. they're drove up on a spot, yes. and then everybody can hear the car run. They can see it come in. They either you know raise it up or lower it or whatever. So at least yeah. you're seeing that portion of it. Well, well and at the end of it, there's the big parade or whatever. Yeah, right. where they're driving out of there. Yeah. And, and all also, the builders that are there are actually you know that, that they're showing builds going on while SEMA's going on. They're not half doing the car. They're holding. I mean, they're putting everything that it takes to make a whole car. Right. Well, so and that goes, they have build-off competitions within SEMA, like sure. you build your car beforehand. Um, I, I got to interview the guy that, that built this uh, 39 Dodge hearse, and he flew it here from Australia. They landed in California. He drove it all the way here to Kansas. <laughs> they went up to Nebraska, hooked up with a bunch of other these rat rod guys, and then they drove all the way back to SEMA. So, I mean, now that's what I consider a build for Siemens. I mean, they built it and they put thousands of miles on that thing. Sure. You know, it's good for the product. Yeah. I mean, for, for his shop, I mean, yes. it's, it's, a, it's a built shop, but you, you go to look at someone who's driven a car, they're like, well, I, I believed in it enough that it was my only mode of transportation. I flew it to, to uh, another country and drove it around. Okay. Now that shows me that that guy has confidence in his skills. Yeah, I think you're talking about a car guy. And not a yeah. vendor, because the vendors just yeah. ship a car and yeah. drive it in. You're talking about a guy that really loves his build. I, yeah, I, you know, with SEMA, I don't think it's it really matters on that because it is a trade show. So having displays, again, cams and whatnot, you want to see the cam. You want to have a you know personification of engine and car, and it's all pretty and whatnot. But it really doesn't need to drive. Yeah, but if it's got a cam in it, I want to hear it. But it can't be started. It run. Yeah. It can only be started on how, how it idles. So you have engine Friday. test stands, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, but, the, but the thing it seems is like once you park your car, you cannot start it up again. Yeah. Nope, fifteen percent fuel coming in, and it can't be started again until Friday. Oh, now we're back to a car show. You're going to tape the, you know, the gas. And they do. Yeah, yeah they, <laughs> that's the only batteries thing. disconnect. That's actually your inspection when it comes in. They, as long as the fuel gauge is below like uh, 20, 15 percent or whatever, then it's allowed in. That's the only thing they check. And then the other part you're talking about when they drive across the stage and they, you know, they televise that and it goes on all the YouTube channels. That's only like 50 cars and everything else is already in there and loaded in like days before. Right. So, yeah. But even with some of these. You know, I know I like to go back to it, but 
there was even a uh, there was a one of the newer Corvettes there. Uh, three C eights. Right. Like Spring Alpha and Corvette had an R and an eight. Yeah. Normally. But this one, the pads, the damn brake pads are on backwards. Oh. <laughs> now, how do you do that? I didn't see that. But, I didn't yeah, see yeah. the pictures of it. Yeah. I don't know how because <laughs> I, I honestly I didn't see any pictures of that, and I doubt that. that. Here, right? <laughs> Those cars are so tightly controlled by GM that they were gone on Friday within like five minutes of the hall closing, and I don't think the brake pads could have been in backwards. I, I didn't see the pictures, and and I know that GM owns them, and only the engineers are allowed to move them, and right. they brought their own truck and took them out of there within seconds. Yeah, well this one, the the pictures that I saw, it was definitely the same carpet from the from the, one sure. of the halls, sure. you know, so, you know, if you've been there, you know that carpet, but yeah. the uh, uh, it was definitely a, a picture, but it was in one of the side halls. It wasn't in the main hall. Huh. There were and, only three. And it, it's, I don't think it's possible. Well, I, <laughs> I got I to gotta see pictures, it. I, there, there are pictures of it, you know, so. Yeah. But, you know, I, and I understand that the engineers would take care of most of that for your for your major manufacturers. That car is Yeah, a but it's not a car show, right? right? So it doesn't matter whether they're in left, right, <laughs> backwards, <laughs> forwards, or if they're in there. Yeah, exactly. And they're at all. <laughs> Bluetooth brakes. I tried to get to drive it, and it was a hard no. Yeah, it was a no one can move this except for GM's engineers, and they all started and ran fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you you would want to make sure of that, you know, if it's right. a major major. Well, it's embargoed still. No yeah. one's allowed to touch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, the guys have been to uh, uh, SEMA or not? Have any of you guys been to PRI? Nope. No. No. That's coming up. Next. Yes. Tomorrow. Next coming up. Starts tomorrow. Um. So with PRI, anyone interested in going? Oh, definitely. Because you sure. get you get you ticket. You know, when you sign up for SEMA, you get your PRI badge as well. You do? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I had a chance, oh, but I'm yeah, not. But but yeah. uh, must miss that. I got to Yeah, I don't. I've never. I, I have a separate application for PRI. I mean, I have it if I want to go. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every time we filled it out, we got our PRI badge along <laughs> with it. But you know, now I would say that at PRI. You know, that's that's even more tightly focused Very vendors. Much. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's all about performance. And they have I, I didn't when we went last year, there weren't crappy cars. I've heard that all the builds are perfect and of course it's such a small industry that you know it's just the race car, street car guys. Yeah. And uh, it's it's very industry focused and a lot more probably fun for us industry guys. Yeah, and, and so if you get a chance, it's it's a smaller show, yeah. But it's still it's still cool to see all the new products and and see the, all the different stuff. But yeah, I, I would say that the um, there's more pride in build at PRI than SEMA. Well, they're all running eights, right, or seven well, on the street too. Not all of them, but you know <laughs> that there's like uh, one guy that was at SEMA uh, that he had, they built a uh, uh, an FJ uh -huh. and then. Drove it off road all the way to SEMA, and uh, uh, but they also had another Overland build that they had, they had, but it wasn't a, a race car by any standards. But it, but these guys they build their stuff to to run, and they you know have these sponsorship deals, and they they build really nice stuff, and uh, you know they they uh, they actually it's guys PRI is more like guys that love cars, build cars, sure. and. You know they have pride and ownership, and it's a smaller knit group. So they're like, you see old Joe blows welds. You know they're, you know they they know they're they're gonna get to. Yeah, you're gonna get destroyed if you yeah. do something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. SEMA's a lot more marketing guys. Yes, it is a lot more suits. Yep, but, yep, exactly. Yeah, definitely. But I, I will say, if you guys get a chance, go to PRI. It's it's pretty fun. I need to. Garrett's having his lime scooter race this year. Really, I almost went just for that. Yeah. So it's not too late. I guess I could drive up there tonight. Yeah. Well, it's next week. Next next, week. Oh, is it next week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you're going, us, Frank, aren't you? Or it starts on Monday. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, it's, uh, is it Thursday? No, next Thursday? Thursday, Friday. Oh, okay. No? Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Yeah. In good old. I thought it was the 5th. Indianapolis. No, yeah, that's a week like, later this year for some reason. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, last that, year it was like bang, bang. This year there's a little bit in between. I'd be more interested in that show than I would see. I mean, if I had to choose again, right? I'd go to that before I would see my. Yeah, probably no. I'm more of a race oh, okay. guy anyway, so. Yeah, well, I I 
maybe next year we can all get together and go because it's it's awesome. It's well, sure. let's go. Let's do that. Go right now. All right. You didn't talk much, Tim. You got any input? I talked a little, but I don't really have any more input. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim, I'm not everybody knows this is a Cuda man. Awesome. That has a Hemi Cuda, yep. a 1970 Hemi Cuda. Nice. Uh, plus uh, a few other vehicles. Yes. What do y'all do? You have Tim? A couple of Cudas, a uh, couple of Vipers, a Charger, and a Hellcat. So, Charger Hellcat. And you're getting ready to do what? Uh, go out to Phoenix to the Bob Onrot School of Driving. Uh, when you buy a Charger Hellcat, you get an SRT experience, they call it. <laughs> and Bob Onrot puts that on. So myself and a friend here locally with another Hellcat, we're going to go together and have some fun. That should be fun. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. That That's a really new school. Fun. Yeah. That's a cool school. you get school. a day or is it is a, day. a month long? Or? <laughs> no, it's a day for free. Yeah. It's about a thousand dollar value. I think Very your cool. arms are tired at day one too, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I've it's done it once year. before about ten years ago and yes they were. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun it's a whole lot better using somebody else's yes. tires too. It's yeah, it's for sure. A fun yeah. experience. Definitely what, a fun experience. What vipers? Uh, I have a GTS coupe, oh. final edition, and then a SRT ten convertible. Awesome. Nice. All Both vipers. vipers red. Yeah, Viper. Yeah, oh, Tim is also, um, oh, uh, in uh, not really competition for shift where we're at tonight, but uh, he's in some condos out west that are auto condos. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Zoo Park Storage Condominiums. So I'm one of the owners of a of a condominium. Con yeah. yeah. I'm just I've got a couple of units. Yeah, we got a pretty good video on that. That's a nice channel. facility. I have a friend that has yes. my 35. Bruce, Bruce has a. a it's just about there. sold out. I think there's one left. Yeah, I think Bruce sold that. That's cool. Okay. That's yeah, cool. The 35 I had, Bruce had it out there. Yeah. I haven't been out there. Yeah, it's. A lot of no nice cars out there, too. Yeah, there, it is. There is. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> nice facility. I think very nice. Didn't facility. Rodney have a place out there? Yeah, he, he was time? out. He was out east. Oh, out east. Okay. Yes, he was out east, and then that's when him and I kind of came together. But yeah, he had one out east, but he he kind of wanted the more social. If I didn't open, have that, I'd be down here. You know, he wanted the more <laughs> open, open social rather than yeah. people go behind me and shut the door, and and so that's kind of how this this uh, this started. You know what they say, it's never too late to change. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's some open lips out there. Yeah. <laughs> or you can be a social member here. Too. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, we sell social and, and corporate memberships. So, so tell us about your car collection. I, it, it's a small collection. I have a couple of Indy cars, 84 Marches, uh, the Craco car that Jeff Braden drove and the Craco car that Michael Andretti drove. Uh, I have an 09 Mercilago, Lamborghini Mercilago. An 01 uh, Diablo, Lamborghini Diablo 60, a 90 uh, Testarossa, an 89 328, uh, a 58 uh, Flathead Dragster, uh, uh, and then I have oh, 20, probably 20 or so uh, custom bikes. and, and just, just a little collection. Just a little collection. <laughs> Nothing, yeah. You know, Jeez. but. And, uh, and anybody Looking. out there that may have this, just so you might want to know this, Doug is actively looking for a front engine dragster. Yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm looking for a Hemi front engine dragster, and uh, preferably with a tail section. Yes, I want a tail section for sure. Well, any, anyone with that many cars must need some insurance. What's that running? A lot. I, I know a guy. I have, have a guy that can help you out with some. Have insurance. to ask my wife, man. <laughs> <laughs> July, my uh, my my tags are due, and, uh -huh. and our car insurance that's, is due at that that's a big in check July. That, so uh, that's only. Can I introduce you to Tim? That's <laughs> only. That's the only time she questions it and yeah. stuff. But, and then I'm getting ready to have a a, a GT40 uh, number 1075. Uh, it's called the Tool Room Edition, uh, 50th anniversary of 1075. But I'm getting ready to have a. Uh, uh, golf livery uh, number 1075 built. Super so, performance? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, wow. 
Uh, I had several super performance GT40s in the past, but I've, I've always uh, wanted uh, 1075, you know, the Golf, and then they just came out like four months ago with the, the 1075 and the room. They call it the tool, the tool room edition, which is the exact copy of, of number 1075. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, and for people that don't know what a 1075 is? That's, that, that's, uh, it won... That's a chassis number that won Le Mans in 68 and 69, back to back. And uh, so, I, uh, like I said, I've had several, all my other GT40s were left-hand drive, but you know, this one I'll, you know, want right-hand drive. And yeah. Now I'll have a gurney bubble, which the 1075 didn't have the gurney bubble. And then I, I like having, I like the front canards and 1075 didn't have front canards, but uh, that's the only deviation that that, sure. that uh, it will. So, speaking of insurance, do you ever keep a car long enough to put insurance on it? Oh, I have a collector <laughs> policy. And, <laughs> but yeah, most of the cars are gone within days. Yeah. I, try, I try not to own them. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've noticed that. You, you know, yeah. Move you, fast. That's, yeah. that's my motto. Right, make money. Yep. Well, everybody that probably doesn't know Dan, and if they do know Dan, he's really called. Hot Rod Dan. Hot Rod Dan. I, I drive a Rumble Seat 37 Ford Convertible, which is an old style, old steel car, and it's an old hot rod. And uh, so I do a lot of the street rods and uh, and the hot rod shows and all this stuff. So that's what, and uh, my car is driven to those events. <laughs> so it's a driver. <laughs> and it has road rash on the front, but I love to drive it. and, and uh, I, I was at a car show out east, uh, well, out in Nest City, and uh, when I drove it back, I came back late at night, bugs everywhere. So I went to the show in Augusta, and and nobody's ever done this to me, so I, I pulled up to the show in Augusta, and the guy says, looks like you've came a long way, sir. <laughs> I says, well, I actually just live in Wichita. I've never seen a car with so many bugs on it in my life. I said, I'll tell you what, you, you, you've shamed me, so I will turn around and go wash my car before, <laughs> before I come back in, into the show. But uh, I kind of enjoyed having the look of it. Like I said, it's, it's roadworthy and it's driven down the road. So uh, a lot of fun. Excellent. So. Something else that Dan is currently doing that this time of year Oh, you might have noticed the He's playing Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. I play Santa Claus. So having a real good time doing that. So, uh, And uh, I, I always get a kick out of what little children are asking for. And a little three-year-old, I, I ask her, I says, Honey, what would you like to have for Christmas? And she says, I'd like to have milk. <laughs> and I've never heard that before. So I ask her, do you want white milk or do you want chocolate milk? She says, I want white milk. So that was just uh, just unbelievable. So you, you never know what the little kids are going to ask for. So, All right, fellas. Funny. Well, this has been a great session. Um, we're going to wrap it up. We'll probably uh, do it again in a couple weeks. Some of you might be here. Some of you might not. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely, if you guys are interested, we'll uh, stay in touch and then we'll uh, do this more often. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, sounds yeah. like a fun Thank time. You. Thanks if, for having us. Uh, there is a suggestion on what we might talk about at our next show, uh, you know, feel free. Yeah, just, uh, you can hit us up on, on Facebook uh, or, uh, you know, whatever. Sounds you know, good. Somehow. On the phone. Appreciate mm -hmm. you guys and appreciate you guys coming to shift. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm just going to put that in there real yeah. quick. But uh, well, well, we really appreciate the fact that you let us do it here. Yeah, so, it's a great place. Yeah, and just so you know, place. the... the this this whole series we're we're gonna call it shooting the shift. So cool. 